Good morning. Oh my goodness gracious. I know the tech team does that just to get you awake or to make sure I'm awake or just to give me a little jolt, you know? Yeah, well, it does work. It's a bit like someone standing behind you kicking you, you know? You might not like it, but you can feel it. Well, good morning to you all. How's everybody doing? Yeah, it's despite the rain and despite the gloominess, we're, you're here. We're, we're grateful that you're here. We're blessed that you're here. Whether you're here for the first time or for a medium length or you've been coming and coming or you haven't been in a long time, you are a blessing and we rejoice in your presence. So let me start by just doing the things that they used to do in person on the airline is now a video. And we're working on the video. But until we have the video, if you need to leave emergency or really otherwise, there's exits right out that front door. There's also the side door, many of you came in. And there's one to my right, it says exit, and then one to my left. And if you need a restroom, there's one in the narthex, and then there's two downstairs in Fellowship Hall. And we definitely invite you to our hospitality time coffee hour this morning. We've got a really special one to honor a longtime hospitality team member. So please join us. I won't tell you what some of the surprises are, but you'll, I think you'll appreciate them. So next Sunday, we have a treat. We have what I call the Pine Mountain Gang. It's uh, the women who went up to Horton Center, the outdoor ministry of the Iron Church a, a few weeks ago. So uh, I was brought a rock this morning from Kaylee. Uh, so they may bring each of you rocks. I don't know. I know they have some treats for you. So, and we're looking forward to having you all uh, lead worship. Um, and that's, you all have some announcements, right? You're looking at me like you have something to announce. Okay, well, you come on up. That's the yard sale. It's really big. It's our biggest fundraiser of the year. We need it. You're both in need. Am I not close enough? Is that better? Okay. Yard sale next Saturday. We are collecting everything. But I'm in charge of clothing. So anything, it has to be something that someone's going to want to buy. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking saver stuff, we're talking good stuff. And so if you can bring it, <laughs> level well, favors. there's a difference. Yes. So, you know, keep that in mind. So Thursday morning, we'll be here. All day Friday, we'll be here. If you can drop your stuff off either of those two days. And it would be nice if we were all ready to go Saturday morning at eight o'clock. Right. And I know I have Linda Messer and we think Evie is gonna help inside. Um, and then the bake sale we're also doing. Anything you can bring, breads, pies, whatever. I know you just did it two weeks ago or a week, whenever it was. But we're doing it again. And it, it's popular. People love it. And bring those in all day Friday would be good. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about setup and takedown. Uh, there, there's a lot of things in Elizabeth's barn that has been donated. And that has to all make its way here. Anything that you have that is going that can fit inside, not an outside sales item, will be here Thursday morning, beginning at nine o'clock, to accept those things. If you can help bring the things over from Elizabeth in order to set up Thursday morning or most of the day on Friday, um, we have a trifecta team of uh, Jeff Perkins and George Ackerman and Brant. Um, for Friday to go to homes to pick things up. I have three people so far. If you have something at your house that you cannot carry yourselves, please let me know so that we can take care of that. And we would so appreciate people that still have some energy Saturday afternoon to help us pack up those things that didn't sell. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nancy and Connie. And you never know what you're gonna find at a yard sale. You know, um, there may be a shirt like Doug wears. Yeah, could, could you just stand up and show that? That's the that's one of my favorite shirts I've ever seen. And um, he's he's too modest. Doug, Doug wears the nicest shirts. Um, and um, I'm one day gonna.
try to outmatch him, but I don't think I can because he just keeps up in the game every Sunday. Thank you, Doug. So the next few weeks, a lot of the scriptures have to do with wisdom. They're wisdom scriptures, the wisdom tradition. And many of the wisdom writings are appear in the, the Psalms, the book of Psalms. And so Psalm 111 talks a little bit about wisdom. It says, the awe of God is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. morning. Please join me in the unison reading of the, of the call to worship is in the bulletin. We are seekers of eternal life. We are, we are seekers of an awesome God. We are seekers of the way. We, we are, are seekers, seekers of the truth. We are seekers of community and compassion. We are, we are seekers of bright hope and great joy. Come all who enter this house on this morning, there is always a place for you. And our opening hymn this morning is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness in the Black Hymnal, page 286, verses 1 and 2. Oh, I got it. There's two. Right here. And 
now join in the unison opening prayer. Solomon was called by ritual and custom and rose into greatness with Call us into your window, meeting right action with pure living, right relationship with blessed community, holy justice with everlasting peace, born in wisdom and bathed in grace. We open our hearts to your presence. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Well, I'd like to invite uh, children, children of all any age, come on down front here if you'd like. You have to smile though. Um, <laughs> you got it. Good, I got two, got two smiles. Three, almost, yeah, fourth one came, all right. It's tough, but you can smile in church. You know, in fact, if you can't smile in church, where can you smile? Yeah. So you all, have you all, you've been to our coffee hour, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know you two have been. I, what's your favorite part? The food. What about you two? Anything besides the food? Eating. Yes. You got to eat the food, right? How do you think the food gets there? People make it, and then how do you think it gets onto the table and it looks so beautifully arranged, and it looks just perfect until we start to get into it, and then chaos, and then there's some folks there to help you? People, yes, people. We have a hospitality team that come pretty early to set up. Uh, the amazing thing is they're always smiling when I go down there. Yes. But they bring that, and that's part of their ministry, is bringing hospitality to all of us. And then others bring that food to share. Some people bring food every Sunday. Uh, in addition to the dinners that we had, the great dinner that we just had on Tuesday the 13th. So there's a big tradition of hospitality. you know. And so we, we do it for a couple of reasons. One, we do it to eat. But we do it because... They're eating in the Bible all the time. They're having feasts all the time. They love to celebrate over food and community because it was one way that they could show each other that they cared, they could praise God, and they could welcome new people and said, welcome, come to our table. So the hospitality team is so critically important. Can you imagine if we all got out there, get out of worship, we go, you two go running down there, you two go running down there, and just an empty table? Oh, what a bummer, right? <laughs> Some churches, it's an empty table or just as many wells be because there's only one or two things. So the Wakefield Church does hospitality excellent, impeccably well. And it's because of lots of people, but in particular, there are three people every Sunday who come, Rachel, Laura, and Janet. And one of them is, is leaving. So Janet, would you come, come up here? I know, but well, well, we warned you. We did just not a good, wasn't like Doug, where I didn't warn him about the shirt. <laughs> Rachel, do you want to come up too? Just to... Laura, as you know, is not feeling well, so it's good to be here, but. Okay, you you we face these people. You don't have to, yeah. So these two plus Laura are the ones who bring us that amazing coffee hour every Sunday. They painful. In fact, I heard you trying to get the stove started today. Did you finally get it started? Yeah, because Janet came today. Even though we said you could have the Sunday off, she came and said, "No, this is what I do. Um, you'll be doing it till you jump on the plane." I expect. That's right. I'll be here next Sunday too. Yeah. <laughs> And then I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. And where are you going to? West Virginia. West Virginia. Almost heaven. <laughs> yeah. And are you excited? Very excited. Yeah. There's there's some mountains down where you're going to. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's it's a um, little sad that I'm leaving a homestead that's been in the family for 250 years, but comes the time, then you just have to do it. Yeah. yeah. So, and I'm I have mixed emotions about that. Yeah. Mainly, mainly because my husband was born and raised there. His father was born and raised there. The family, you know, it's just a family thing. And it was left to my husband. So and then it was left to me and I left it to my son who was going with me. So there'll be no more Twombly's on that farm. Yeah. yeah. So, but. You can still call it the Twombly farm. They right? probably will. Everybody yeah. knows it as a Twombly farm, but they're happy about it too. So we're all going together. Yeah. Well, we, we've got mixed emotions, but most of them are just sad. Oh, well. And we're going to miss you. Yeah. Well, don't worry, be happy, but we can also. I miss everybody, all my friends, everybody at the church. It's been, I was married in the church, so I've been here a long time. I've yeah, seen so come and go, and, and it's, I probably, and I probably shouldn't say this, I probably will not find a church as nice as this one. Oh, we knew that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They've been here and when I needed them and when I didn't need them. And everybody's been pleasant, very pleasant. Well, you tell us the church you like. We'll call ahead and <laughs> tell them that if you have a coffee coffee hour. <laughs> if they don't have a coffee hour, I'll try and make one. <laughs> <laughs> Could we give her a standing ovation for 15 plus years? And if you're able, if you could stay standing, we're going to say a quick little prayer, and then we're going to send Janet and her son forth with Go Now in Peace, which you all know, Go Now in Peace. And uh, we'll sing it through a couple of times. So we're going to pray for you. And if you want to just, I put my hands out. You don't have to, but send forth your love. Uh, and your peace with Janet. Gracious God, thank you for this amazing servant, this faithful servant of yours who has shined her light out into this community for so, so many years and has brought her light to our church and our community for such a long time and it manifests in the delightful time of hospitality that greets us after every service. She won't be replaced, but she will be missed. May you go with our love and go knowing that the spiritual home you find there will be blessed. Thank you. So we're gonna sing you out. So join me. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. One more time. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Thank you, everyone. Go, go in peace. Give another hand there. You guys can stay here. You can head back, whatever you'd like to do. Andrea, invite you up to read. Andrea is reading three passages today, doing marathon work. Good morning. Good morning. First reading this morning is from Proverbs chapter nine, verses one through six. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her female servants. She calls from the highest places in the town. You who are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live. 
and walk in the way of insight. Second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to one another, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which the ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. I invite you just to join me in prayer for a sec. Gracious and loving God, may we open our hearts to your wisdom. May we open our hearts to your blessings and your leadings and guidings. May you bring into us the spirit of discernment understanding, acceptance, and peace. And may the words of our mouths and the meditations in all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. So I, I think I've said before, I love the wisdom traditions. I actually love the wisdom traditions throughout uh, spiritual traditions and religions. They're really something special. I know in seminary, I, I studied them and they can be perplexing because wisdom isn't a straightforward concept, but every tradition has a tradition what they would refer to in one way or another as the wisdom traditions, deep wisdom. In fact, oh, I, I had a definition I was gonna read you, but this morning I saw something, this was a better definition from Carolyn Aldwin. Wisdom is a practice that reflects the developmental process by which individuals increase in self-knowledge, self-integration, non-attachment, self-transcendence, and compassion, as well, well as deeper understanding of life. Yeah. In the First Testament, in the Old Testament, there are several wisdom books. Um, there's wisdom sprinkled throughout, but the books we know as wisdom books, many of the Psalms are wisdom traditions. The book of Job is a wisdom book. Ecclesiastes, they're famous. There's a time for every season. Um, the Song of Songs, or sometimes referred to as the Song of Solomon, which many folks have been trying to get out of the Bible for hundreds of years, even thousands, if you think about some of the, the Jewish skeptics of that wonderful piece. Um, and their, their, their books are not connected in terms of how they were written and who wrote them, but they're connected and coming from a place that talks about the reality of this life, talks about how we live in this world today, and they're divine. 
And one of the books that does that so well is the book of Proverbs, a key wisdom book. And in the first nine chapters are not sayings as in the rest of the book, but they're this wonderful explanation of wisdom. And wisdom is portrayed as Sophia, as woman wisdom, uh, a divine element um, that comes from God and portrayed as a woman. Now, there are some Bible translations that, that make that either, well, they don't make it gender neutral. They make it male, which just seems abhorrent, right? Because it's, it's a terrible translation. It's not even accurate. But woman wisdom does exist. Also, there's woman folly has the juxtaposition of what um, wisdom and non-wisdom can be. But woman wisdom is throughout the first nine chapters and appears again at the very end of the book of Proverbs and is telling us how to live in this world. So in this, this passage from Proverbs, it's a feast. Woman wisdom invites us to the table, to the feast of wisdom. There's also the table of folly, which let's just be honest, many of us spend a lot of time at the table of folly. Sometimes it's fun to be at the table of folly, but it, it has a logical consequence where it's not so much fun or we've done so much damage that we can't undo it. So woman wisdom invites us to the table, the feast of where when we come and engage in God's sacred commandments and sacred covenant with the people, we gain wisdom. Now I read this morning, Diana Butler Bass had a beautiful piece about wisdom um, and was talking about these very same scriptures because two of the scriptures we read come from the Second Testament, the New Testament, which also has a strong wisdom theme, though it's not talked about as much. But the wisdom tradition exists and is alive and well in the New Testament. It's prominently in the book of James, which is one of my favorite books, the letter of James. But it's also in Matthew and various parts of Matthew. Paul has it in many of his writings in Corinthians, both books in Colossians, in Romans, and in Ephesians, which talks about how to be the wise one. And it's actually in other parts of the book because wise sages, and we have a sage in our church, thankfully, but wise sages put down some of the teachings and to put it on paper, and it became a part of the Bible. So Diana Butler Bass was remarking this morning, and it was remarkable because if you all remember, these last several weeks, we've been talking a lot about eating, a lot about feast, right? We talk about the bread of life, but also in the Old Testament, we've talked about multiplying bread so all could be fed, Elijah in the miracle bread. We've been talking about manna from heaven. So we have been talking about the feast. And she made the point that Throughout, many of those are bread and wine, both fermented things, because they just don't happen, right? Despite even the bread makers that we have today, you still have to do something to get the things into the bread maker, and it still takes some time, even though it's quicker than making it from scratch. And wine, I don't know, I don't imagine you can make quick wine, I'm not a winemaker, but it takes time. And in fact, we buy wine and as price goes, the older it gets. Now that's a great feeling, right? You get more valuable the older you get. Just remember that. You're like a fine wine. But her point is, it just doesn't happen. She talks about settings where she goes into and people say, I, I want to be a wisdom person. I want to be, so I came here to be a wisdom person, learn how to be a wisdom person. Well, it, it doesn't really work like that because it's more than just the intention. It has to do with the understanding and then the doing. And native traditions, you just don't walk around going, oh, I want to be a shaman. I want to be a medicine person. No, the community tells you you are. And sometimes you say, no, I don't want to be that because it's not the easiest life because you're being called out to be the wisdom person. And wisdom people often are not the leaders, the so-called chiefs and directors and the CEOs. They're the people who may counsel them. But to be a true wisdom person, you have to counsel them and tell them some things that they don't want to hear. And often people in power 
heads have gotten big. They become what we call megalomaniacs. And so when someone comes and says, I don't believe you should do that, often what happens is the wisdom person vanishes. Definitely happens on Game of Thrones. <laughs> or the wisdom person becomes just another savvy politician that knows how to walk around that megalomania, essentially seeding their wisdom and becoming just another of the manipulators and the exploiters. So becoming a wisdom person is just like, well, boy, you're a wisdom person. In fact, if I was going to walk around now and call a few of you out to be wisdom people, you'd probably be shrinking down in your pews, right? Because who wants to be the wisdom person? Now, we all want wisdom, right? We all want wisdom, but to be that person. Now, there's a, a middle ground we can take wisdom in. We can learn wisdom. We can learn wisdom both by going inward and doing our individual spiritual practices, but we also learn it by being in community, by being at the table with each other, by sometimes holding each other accountable, by sometimes having disagreements that could be sacred disagreements between friends or even between adversaries that are building bridges so that they will one day be friends. So we can learn wisdom in community because that's how those disciples, which certainly didn't join Jesus being wisdom people. And throughout, Jesus was guiding them, sometimes admonishing them for not getting it yet. But Jesus knew it wasn't just an overnight thing. You just don't wake up and say, well, I'm a wisdom person today. You become that over time. And you take on that mantle, or you take that mantle for a time, and then you pass it on to someone else. So you can be the non-wisdom person for a time. One of the reasons I love wisdom is because I look around and see so little of it. I read it in the spiritual things, but when I see what's happening, not just in politics, but in business, in my own communities, in this community, sometimes I see I don't see wisdom. Or I see the voices of wisdom being trampled down and pushed down because it's not what we want to hear. Even though it's exactly what we need to hear. On the ride up on NPR today, they were talking about inflation, which was less than 3% for the last 12 months. But talking about a significant amount of this inflation, but I imagine a lot of inflation came because people were price gouging. They were exploiting a tough thing in order just to make more money. I'm not singling anyone out because we've been doing that throughout history, but that's not wisdom. And there have been wisdom people trying to speak into that because at the time we're all going through hardships. We should not be exploiting that for the gain of a few. That's not wisdom. Wisdom is about community and having a vision that goes beyond just your own particular needs, that goes beyond just your own generation, goes beyond your own family, but takes into account what we need as a people to survive today, but long into the future. And wisdom speaks to that, even though it may be a voice that's not wanting to be heard. And the leaders of the time, some of them are wise people. King Solomon was the epitome of wisdom, even though the legends about him are not true. He did not have 700 wives. That's not even possible, come on. But King Solomon was called by God, not for the very reason that he wasn't, when he was asked by God some questions, he had a vision for the all, not for just his own ruling, his own monarchy. He saw a vision for the people. Now, in the Old Testament, they, he got material rewards because of that. That's not a theology I espouse to. But Solomon was the epitome of wisdom for the Jewish people, passed on to us. But we have our wisdom figure in Jesus who clearly did not measure his success based on his own material gain. 
but based it on the whole and how well we were loving each other, caring about each other, holding each other with compassion and speaking truth to power, no matter who that power is. So welcome to the wisdom readings of the next few weeks. You'll be hearing about them, hopefully living them, hopefully reading them on your own and just taking a little bit of wisdom is in because what we need today more than ever is wisdom. Right here, outside these walls, in every one of our communities, in our state, in our nation, in our world, we need to be guided by wisdom. And I pray that we are. Oh, I'm going to stay up here, I think. Well, oh, one of the things we do out of our wisdom is to pray. I invite you to lift up prayers that are on your heart, joys and celebrations, sadnesses and concerns. I'll just lift up a prayer that Maureen, Bridget, Adam and Molly Rose are back from Ireland safely. I got an Ireland rocks pin and it has sheep and all kinds of instruments on it. But I asked Molly Rose, do the sheep ba in an Irish brogue? And she said, yes. Right. And if you want to disprove that, you have to go to Ireland. <laughs> yeah, you're going to... <laughs> Welcome back. Other prayers that folks would like to lift up. Yeah, Pat and Carol. I'll go first. They want first. Is it on? Oh, um, thank you very much for your prayers this week. My brother-in-law, John, um, he had had an open heart surgery um, three weeks ago, but in this past week, he's had three surgeries because of some complications. Um, and the last one being, um, they had to repair his sternum with plates. So he's at Brigham Hospital in Boston, um, getting good care, and he's coming along, but he's got a long, long way to go recovery. Thank you. Prayers for John. Thank you. Prayers for John. I, the strength and resilience it must take. Three surgeries in the span of a week. So John remains in our prayers and we hope he comes home soon. <clears throat> uh, for Kathy Coquel, whose brother Jim Weiner passed away last week. So prayers for Kathy and her family and Prayers for Jim's spirit as he moves forward. Joe, Pat. My son, Billy, who comes one week a month, usually, um, came down with COVID. So, so he's not here this week. So we really miss him. He does so much for me. Oh, yeah. We miss him, too. And sick though he said he's just good a bit of a that's it well prayers for billy's healing prayers for all those who is a big uptick in covid a lot of people aren't getting very sick but prayers for everyone um those who are sick and those who might be around those who are sick prayers for healing as we go through this this stretch kind of Last week, I asked for prayers for <clears throat> Ali Nason, son-in-law, who has ALS, and he passed away two days ago. He was only 63. Oh, I'm so sorry, Connie. So prayers for Ali's spirit and his family who are grieving and mourning, and for you all, peace be with you. Just, a, uh, just an update on... Uh, our, our little creamy friend Nash, he's uh, he's doing okay. Two and a half pounds now, uh, six weeks old. So, um, but I I guess the joy is the parents can have hold him. So he faces a lot. So keep in touch. Continue to keep Nash in our prayers, and for you all who are surrounding him with love. I have a celebration I'd like to share. 
<clears throat> like to remind everybody that August 31st, Saturday, here in town, is going to be a celebration. Ginny is one of the helpers, uh, is going to be serving strawberry shortcake. The town's 250th anniversary celebration is at the ball fields Saturday, August 31st. Oh, uh, this is an example. This is an example of a bracelet you can buy out at the dump. They're, they're five, they're five bucks. And cheap, cheap, and have 18 times the price. It's the only way you're going to get in. And uh, please come. It's going to be a great celebration of Wake Food. And it's all free. Thank you, Dave. And we'll lift up prayers for those 250 and even the years before uh, of those folks who have guided this community with wisdom and grace and continue to do it uh, with strawberry shortcake and more. Laurel Fry. Laurel Fry left today. She was really hoping to be here for the, to participate in the hospitality today, but she's sick with COVID. Um, and she went home, and I told her that we'd be praying for her today. So let's do that. Thank you, Margie. Continued prayers for Laura uh, and her bout with COVID, and also for her family that they not they get it as well. Pam. I was going to wait until next week, but since Dave mentioned the 31st, I have to mention the 30th. The, on Friday is also a very important day for the 250th birthday of the town. It's the actual day. And at 10 o'clock, approximately 10 o'clock in the morning, the governor will be arriving by train at Turntable Park. There will be a celebration there. He will then be going to the town hall and they will have their monthly um, council meeting there at one o'clock, everyone. So you're invited to the town hall, but also at one o'clock, you're invited to um, the Sampin Hill Farm that we use, we know as the Denley Farm for a really special celebration. The governor will be reading the proclamation 250 years ago at that very site, the governor read the proclamation that incorporated the town of Wakefield. We will be doing a little program at the same site, the same day, 250 years later, with many of the descendants also there. It's open to the public, it's open to everyone, and encouraged to come in period dress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pam. It's really wonderful for Governor Sununu to come and spend that much time and read a, procl uh, read a proclamation in honor of his um, forebears. Do you, who was the governor? Do you know who the governor was who read that first one? John Wentworth, yes. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah. We, we, we were wondering if, okay. <laughs> okay, good for you. Anyone else? I invite you to join me in the unison prayer and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. God of silence and God of all sound, help us to listen. Help us to do the deep listening to the sounds of our souls waiting to hear your soft voice calling us deeper into you. Give us attentive ears that begin to separate the noise from the sounds that are you, you who have been speaking to us and through us our whole lives for so long that you can seem like background noise. Today, help us hear these prayers, wisdom God, our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed is thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom, power, the glory forever. Amen. And as we take the morning's offering, we'll hear a wonderful offering from the choir.
Please join me in the unison prayer of dedication. Praise God from the beauty of the mountains. Praise God from the serenity of the lakes. Praise God from the homes we make in our hearts. Praise God as we offer these gifts to your glory. Amen. And we're going to sing verses 3 and 4 of Spirit of Gentleness, number 286 in the Black Hymnal.
Okay, you seekers of wisdom go and find it in this most small and large of places. We're going to be treated to a sung benediction from Ken and Gloria with Buddy on guitar. Oh, God, you are my God, and God will praise you. Oh, God, you are my God, and God will praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. We're going to sing it a second time. Oh, God, you are my God. And all of you, I praise you. Oh, God, you are my God. And all of you, I praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days, and step by step you'll lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. <laughs>